Hello and welcome to today's Techie Tea Party. Today we're going to be looking at Google Sites and a collection of tools that allows you to very quickly build your own website. So this might be useful if you're thinking about creating a new school website, if you're looking to maybe structure some content, whether that's for a year group or maybe a course that you're developing or have developed. It might be with the class themselves. Maybe if they're looking at a specific topic or area, they might want to be building their own websites. So maybe something like the Romans or about a new food brand that they've created, or it might be for individual students to create their own version of e-portfolios. There's a huge amount of different ways that you can be using websites and creating your own websites with real purpose. And my experience of doing this with students is that it brings really high levels of motivation. I've seen really reluctant writers in the past suddenly be the most keen to add more and more content to their website, knowing that it had a real purpose and that people were going to be able to come on and see what they've written. So I'm on my Google homepage to do this. I'm going to go to the top right hand corner to where it says apps and I'm going to scroll down to where it says sites. Depending on the version of Google you're using, you may have to scroll down, choose the option of seeing even more um, tools and then scroll and right down until you can find it. But we're after this sites option. What this will then do is it'll pop up in a new tab or window and we're going to go to the option that then says create. And we're going to choose to do it in new sites. You can do it in classic sites, um, but for new, for me, the new version um, is really user friendly, really straightforward, um, and it'll just help us to kind of break it down nice and easy. So I'm going to click in new sites, and then this will pop up like this. Um, for me, it's sometimes useful to sit down with a piece of paper before I start and to kind of plan out what my site is going to be looking like in terms of structure and what pages I'm going to need um, and also thinking about ideas about branding and such like. Um, really today's videos are about the structure, the permissions, the adding people to it, these sorts of things. Tomorrow we're going to look more at the content um, aspects of it. So to start with, We've got untitled side at the top, so I'm going to name this Incredible Insects. So that is the website has now been named. Um, I'm going to start with my homepage and I'm going to make this welcome to our website. To just quickly get you a flavor of how the content looks um, and how easy it is to change things, I can quickly go to change image and I can click select image, upload. If I had my own picture that I want to use for this, you might click that, um, but I'm gonna click select image. It's got a gallery of really high quality backgrounds that you might want to use to start with, but you can also click search and I can search for insects. It would help if I spelled that right. I can search for insects um, and you can see that they all come up from Google. And as it says at the top, they are labeled for commercial reuse with modification. Um, so that means that we are able to use these. Um, so I might go for this one here and then I can click select. And you can see that pops up. As it's popping up, you can see in the corner it says adjusting for readability. So what that'll do is it'll make slight modifications to these images so that people can easily read the content above it. I can then choose header type and I can choose, well actually I just want it to be a title, I don't want the image. I can choose a normal size banner a larger banner or even a cover banner which is bigger still so you can imagine for your first page coming on you might want it to be nice and big so it catches the eye we've also got the option at the top left to add a logo so you know if i'm making this for a brand you know, I mean i create a new healthy snack that everyone must love for their break time and i've created a logo and um, highly recommend websites such as logo Maker to use that to create logos you can do it in powerpoints and in lots of other tools as well to create logos but I just click add logo and um, you can see I've got the option to upload. So if I created somewhere else, I can use that. I can also choose select. And again, just like before, Google image search. If I want it to be a ladybird, I can search ladybird. And then we can add one of these as our icon. Um, and then it would just be a case of if I cross that off. I was selected, wasn't it? If I cross that off, um, 
I've got a little box down here, which means I can't see everything. But that's how we would add an icon. And um, we also had a fav icon there, um, which is just this little picture at the top. So you can create your own little pictures that pop up in the tabs. And um, so the first thing we're going to talk through is themes. So themes are, are nice and straightforward. I just come over to this right hand section, essentially everything you need when you're building a website. So over here, I click themes and I can scroll down and try and find the theme that I like most. Um, so I might choose this impression one. You can see the website changes slightly. If I scroll down a little bit further, you can see I can choose the color that I want to use as my theme. And I can also go to font style underneath and I can choose the font. They give you three options. For me, I think that choice is enough. It helps to make sure that it's actually readable for people who access your website. Um, and it means that for students, they're not getting distracted by unlimited number of choices. So I simply click that and that's our new font for the website. Um, these can be changed at any time. So it might be that at the start you choose one, you then start adding your content, and then after that you decide, actually, I think this might look better. So then thinking about the pages, you can see that I start with a home page. To create a new page, I just click plus, and I can then type what I want it to be called, and I click done. And that adds a new page. Again, I can change this image at the background. You'll also notice at the top, we now have a home page and ant there at the side. I can then create a new page and I can call this ladybirds. And you see that it just keeps adding on and you'll see more and more pop up. So that's how we add our pages nice and easily. And um, what we might want to do, though, is to actually organize these into groups. So I might want to click new page and I'll type in types of insects. And um, I think in terms of advanced, you can add a custom path. So that's when people search your web address, what will be at the end. So if you're wanting to make it nice and easy for people to access, you can change that. It's not a big thing to worry about. So I'm going to ignore it just now and I'm going to click done. So to reorder these, I want this to be at the top. All I do is to drag it up to the top. So type of insects is now there. So when we log in, we get home, we get types of insects. What I actually now want to do though, is I want these to be each under that one. So what we do for that is I just drag it, I pull it up and I pop it on top of it and it'll come underneath. So I could do the same with ladybirds. If I pop it under types of insect, it then pops there. And then same here. So now what you can see, if I go into my web page, I've got home, I've got types of insect. If I hover over it, they appear like that. So it might be the case that actually I want different pages within each of these. So I might click new page and I might type, where do you find them? And I can click done. What I can then do is I can then drag that. And again, instead of just dragging it under types of insect, I can type it under fly and it'll then pop up under fly. You'll notice that the three dots appear to the side. I can choose to set that now as my new home page, which I don't want to do. I can duplicate it. I can change the properties. So if I click that, you'll notice I can change the name and other things. So if I maybe made a mistake, typo, etc., we can do that. Hide from navigation. So maybe you're wanting to store something on this web page, but you don't want people to find it. It's something that you want to link to easily. That'd be a good option. And we've got the option to delete it there as well. And um, we can also add a sub page. And when I click on that, a page actually comes underneath it. So if I just click home, and then what you'll notice is that goes automatically underneath that. So now when I go to types of insect, I go to fly, I can then click down, and then it says, where do you find them? And then we can see home. So that all kind of goes underneath it. Maybe not the best title seeing that home might get mixed up with actually getting home. So what's nice and easy now that we've made that, where do you find them? I can then choose my dots. Choose duplicate the page and um, I'll give it the same title because I'm going to move it to another place. So it shouldn't have an issue with that. And then I can easily drag that to now be in, oops, sorry, now be in for ladybirds and I could do the same for ants. So you could very quickly get that structure for each of your different pages. The other option there is we've got new page. You've also got the option to choose new link. So if I chose that, you can see we've got links to pages that are already on the website, but I might also choose a website out with this. So I might have a good YouTube video about insects. So if I search YouTube insects, 
So I might just want to copy this. So then I can just right click on it, choose copy link address, come back to my website, and I can paste that in. Name, inside video. And then you'll see that that's been moved there, but if I click on it to be here, it then pops there. So that's ready to go. At any time when you're doing this, you can also get a preview of the website. So if I click this icon at the top, it shows me, first of all, this is what it'll look like on a desktop or a laptop or a Chromebook. So I can actually have a play about, I can click on things. Does that look right? Is that how I want it to be? I can choose it to look at what it looks like on a tablet. Okay, so yeah, that's looking pretty good. I click on that, oh, it opens a new tab, okay. Um, and I can choose the one to see what it looks like in mobile. So that's really useful if you know that you've got an audience who will be accessing this on a whole range of devices, just to check, is it user-friendly? Can you read it all? Can you access it all? So I'd really advise regularly checking in on that. The next thing to quickly talk about is how can you add people to contribute to your website? So that is simply this little person at the top with the plus beside them. I can click share with others. And again, I can go down to invite people. I can type a specific email. And to the side there, I can choose to either make them edit or they can view it as published. So that would be more if you want to share them to kind of see it and have a look at it. So I'm going to choose they can edit it. Um, if I click send a copy to myself, that just kind of puts me into the email with it. So I get a copy of the email. You'll notice at the bottom, there's the owner settings and it says prevent editors from publishing, changing access and adding new people. I'd recommend that, especially if you're doing with students, what that allows then is almost you to be in a moderator role for it. So they'll be able to create content to add it, but then you'd have to give it final approval. So I then just click send, and then that would be sent through if they had a good go. Okay. Um, so for the moment, let's click cancel. Let's click done. We've also got our settings up here. The first one, navigation. We've option of top or side. So all that I'll do be is instead of it being, if I just call you here just now, instead of those options being up here, they're now suddenly on the side. So we click this sidebar and they pop up there. So depending on what you're after, that might be good. If we go back to my settings, the color of the menu. So I could set the menu to be in white. Brand images that we briefly looked at before. Um, viewer tools. So these are just information that we can share. Um, and the last one's analytics. And if that's something that you might want to sign up to, if you're interested in knowing more metrics and more numbers around who's accessing your website, how much, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's the key things we're saying. So the last thing just to quickly point out, we do have version history. Um so if you're wanting to go back to a previous version, imagine that someone's came on and they've made quite a lot of mistakes and suddenly the website's missing pages that is really important they had. We can go back to, to previous versions. We've got the option option to duplicate the site. So maybe if you've produced something that's really high quality and you just want to have a, a copy of it there in case something ever goes wrong, you've got the option to make a duplicate. Um, take a tour is something I'd recommend people who are getting used to it, or maybe if you've started to do something but forgotten, all that does is it talks through the different features within sites. But I guess the, the main thing to show at the end here is actual publishing. So when we click publish, you'll see that we give it a web address and it tells you what that web address will be underneath. At the moment, anyone on EduBuzz can see my website. Um, so I'm going to manage that. Um, and I don't want anyone just to see it. So I'm going to start by saying specific people. And then what that will mean is I need to type in specific email addresses who can see this. Um, so that'd be useful if it was something like an e-portfolio that actually it's only the student, me as a teacher, maybe a few other members of staff should be able to access it. That might be one option. Um, we can also change it if you wanted it to be the other way. And actually, we want anyone to be able to see your website. We've made this brilliant website all about um, the local history. So we want anyone to be able to access it. We can then click Save. Um, and then that means that anyone can come on um, and see that when it's been shared. Um, again, when we're inviting people, you've got the option can edit, can view the published. Um, and again, Considering that option down there, so then you've got a lot more control around moderation and um, would be a recommendation I would suggest.
You've also got, once I've clicked there, the option at the bottom to request the public search engines not to display your site. So again, if this was an e-portfolio that I only wanted a few people to see, I'd definitely be thinking about clicking that. Um, but if it was something that I was wanting lots of people to come and see, and we're really proud of the work and it's for everyone, there's there's nothing real private there, um, it'd be good to have it so search engines can. And then it's just a case of clicking publish. And then that will be our website ready. So now when I click view, you'll see that it's got the web address at the top and this is what people will find when they come to our website. Hopefully that's helped you get an idea of how to kind of start your first website, how to add people to contribute to it, how to structure it. Tomorrow we're going to be looking more at the 